Hello, and welcome to another edition in between pages with James Lodge Jr. I'm James Lodge Jr. And here on my network, JLJ Media, which of course I am JLJ also, of JLJ Media here on YouTube and all audio streaming service platforms. We're all about writing. We're all about writing songwriting, script writing, writing books, letter writing, two of which we're going to talk about today. My guest has a new YA book coming out on November 3rd, coming out, called Darling, You're Not Alone. That's the book. It's a book, 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 book. <laughs> right. Sign behind the book in his hands. Oh, yeah. And also, he's also the creator of the You're Not Alone Letter Writing Project. If many of you uh, remember this, on my show, I think it was two years ago, I talked to a woman who was a writer also who started a campaign writing letters to people who were in nursing homes. So I just love this whole concept. Because I'm old, folks. I'm a grandfather of five. I'm an old guy who loves writing. I miss it. And he has a cool name. And he's a redhead. I love gingers. It is JD Slacker. How are you doing, JD? James, man. I mean, that was the best intro I could have <laughs> asked for, man. I, I am. I feel like I'm teed up to just have a great interview with you. And um, man, I feel like we're twin flames out here. And just yes. for we've been, I've been circling this date for a while to come on to your show and talk to your listeners. But uh, I'm feeling good. The hair is feeling red. So. I, lo I love it. I'm a total ginger freak. So. Uh, I'm trying to calm myself down. My my favorite cousin in the world, Jason. Hi, Jason. He's a redhead with freckles. And I'm just like, uh, we, we always were very close growing up. So we were very I'll close. call you quickly and, and we please. can get back to everything. Please, please, please. I was just in Ireland uh, for the first time and I was in the land of redheads and I took a photo with every redhead I met on the street. So I have like a stream of all of them on my phone. And wow, I just, sometimes if I'm having a bad day, I just flip through that and and see and see all the uh, other redheads in my world. But, but there is yeah. something. There is we know there is something about the whole redhead thing, and being being actually an other type of person. Now, you know, I'm othered for other reasons, obviously. Um, but I know a lot of redheads that I over the years we've bonded because sometimes we're treated like other, and that's something that redheads do go through. I mean, I know that, right? Yeah, sure, right. sure. Well, I mean, I think in like middle school when I think you get made up for like wearing a blue hat or whatever it is, like you could get made up for pretty much anything. Yeah, I got I got picked on a little bit for my red hair, but um, once I got to be six foot six, I think people stopped uh, messing with me in, <laughs> in high school. But oh yeah, when I was when I was uh, everyone's height, it was uh, it was a, it was a sticking point. Yeah, it is. I know. So I, I'm, big, I'm a big fan of ginge. I'm a ginger, so we like we like that we support them, and they do have souls, folks. Stop it, they do. <laughs> They're good people. People love. Um, but no, so okay. So we have, we're talking about the book, of course. But I, I so I want to start talking about the letter writing campaign that was kind of born with this because, again, I said I had a show a couple of years ago during a pandemic where yeah, was really cool. writing was writing let some people like to write letters to folks who were alone because a lot of us were some of us didn't have family living with us. We were quarantined in LA. You know, everybody was locked down uh, where you were. So. I like this letter writing thing, which for some people that's ancient, archaic, you know, antiquated. Um, what has gotten you started with this whole actual letter writing? Yeah, well, and I'm so glad you brought it up because to be honest, and it's a really great place to start, is uh, it's actually sort of the genesis of my writing career in general. Um, I was sort of this, you know, as we've already kind of briefly discussed, this loud redhead kind of student in school that really take class seriously so when people are asking me like how did you get into writing books it's like well kind of completely out of left field um but ever since i was a kid i've just had this fascination with writing letters um and i would write to friends and teachers and brothers and you know my parents and i would i would write these like you know one page handwritten letters and i'd have people that almost were sort of shocked when they received them and I didn't really think it was that odd or, or maybe like uh, different, but, you know, I just started doing it for a long time and, you know, years kind of went on and on in this. And then I got into college and there was this girl that I was really close with and she went to go and study abroad. Um, so I was writing her letters all the time. And I found myself just like, look, I mean, quite honestly, James, like looking forward to sitting down to write her a letter the most uh, out of my entire week, once a week. That was like my favorite activity. And somewhere in that process, I just sort of decided, you know what, like, why not, why, why not take this love for writing letters and actually turn it into a novel? And that was how I wrote my first book, Moonflower. 
and uh, I hand wrote the entire first draft, which did you really? Oh you know, yeah, and I do that. I did that for this book as well, and uh, it's it's kind of a big part of my process. But um, and it's you know it definitely upsets a lot of people. Okay, that let's, okay, let's, we, we just stop there. We used to know. We just stop there, folks, because I okay. <laughs> so I'm a little older than you are, <clears throat> but I remember. I remember because I I kept journals for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, I do the same. I do the same. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of ideas, I found my stuff from high school where I wrote, we call the Bible of a story. I wrote the Bible yeah, of yeah, 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 it. Handwritten. But I typed the rest of it on mm. typewriters. Um, but you're saying in this day and age, today, today, you sit down. And so, what do you have? Notebooks or pad? Like, what do you do? So, I get it's, I'm, I'm very meticulous about it. It's a it's a you know Moleskin the company they uh, they, they make, stuff. I have some yeah, stuff. yeah they're really fantastic and I use their planners too but I get an empty Moleskin and I get a pencil mechanical pencil and I hand write uh, what my limit a day is is eight pages in a Moleskin so and, and there's so many reasons why I do this but number one it removes me from technology. Um, there's no cell phones, there's no emails, there's no lap, you know, it's, it's such an, uh, therapeutic meditative process for me to hand write. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, when you're typing, I think you can get ahead of your own, uh, you know, mind when you're, when you're writing something, but when you're handwriting with pencil and paper, man, like that slows you down to such an arduous kind of like walking through cement type process that uh, I slow down, I think quite a bit more about each word and I have more intention behind my sentences. And then another reason is, this is pretty simple and I feel like it, it's kind of slept on for other writers is, I can physically see my process or my progress I'm making. Like James, I wake up and I go, I see, all right, I've got 10 pages, I'm gonna get to 12 today. And then at the next day I've got 12, I'm gonna take it to 14 and I can flip back and actually see them um, so yeah, it's just kind of become my thing, and I love it. <laughs> I, okay, no, you're the first writer I've had. I've done eight thousand shows wow. I've ever met that says that says that. And so what's funny is I so yeah. So uh, do you, do you take a similar? I mean, obviously, it sounds like you don't. Or you handwrite your 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 outlines and Bibles. It sounds well. Like. Just, so, but here's what's funny. So I handwrite. I, this is my schedule. These are the shows I put out of. Well, yeah. I have a I have a calendar on here electronic. But I write everything down yeah. here. Also, I have uh, oh shit over here. I have day planners. Yeah. Oh yes, I, I Oh yeah, them. yeah, I do that. Because for me, helps you remember. Another, yeah. right here. I write I have I have posted notes everywhere. I have to write it down because um, for me, it's like it just seems more real when I write it down than typing it than like initial ideas and thoughts. It's also because technology can fall apart. Mm. So I always think when you just told me that, I think, okay, that means <laughs> if your technology falls apart, you have a handwritten book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's in case. So when, my, when I wrote my first book, this is when I was still playing in college. So I was like 21, 22. And when I would go on the road to travel for our games, and this is, this is after the time I had completed like the handwritten copy and now i was like type working on the typewritten script of the book like drafts three and four when i would leave this is so funny i would take the handwritten copy and hide it like in my apartment thinking like all right if my laptop crashes and someone breaks into my apartment and i'll be able to get back and find at least i'll have that and then i can start all over and that like gave me that security where I was like, oh, you know, if technology fails, like this is my, that's my iCloud. Like that, that's my cloud where everything is uploaded. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely pretty, pretty odd. I'll admit. That's what you said. I was like, wow, I, I, that part I get. So like I said, so I have, like I have, you know, people have calendar to lean on. I'm like, I don't like all that stuff. I like to say, when are we meeting up? I'll send it to you. But I also have written down on a physical paper because I like, it just feels more real for me. Yeah. Um, it does slow you down in a, in a, in a good way. It, it kind of brings you back to you. But see, I always thought, I mean, do people, I was like, do people write anymore? Like, do people actually, I mean, 
are my my grandkids don't write. They all type in text. Like I don't like are they learning cursive in school? Like I always wonder about this kind of stuff. Like and then I read about you and this other you guys are writing. I'm like this is what I had pen pals growing up. It was like we wrote yeah. to each other. Yeah. You know I mean I I'm I'm I think the process I like I have good pens. I always like well mine are right now my precise pens. I yeah. like the the yeah. mini and the micro. Yeah exactly. I like good pens. I'm very much like a pen person. I like good. I like good, you know, notebooks. Yeah. I'm all, I'm all about that. So it's funny. Yeah, Moleskin. They make good stuff. If you're I listening know. out there and you're looking for a, a good book to write in, get a Moleskin. Yes. Sponsor him. Moleskin. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Let's make something happen. Let's talk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but that's the point. It's like, I, I'm, I, so I mean, someone else who's like that. I like I like a good pen. I can like to write something down. I was like, yes, I like my hands. As I said, man, twin flame. I, exactly. I, I was I knew from the second we hopped on. This was good. But I but okay. So, okay, so wait a minute. So you you have your process eight pages a day or so, and yeah. them, you do that, and then a book is done. But then, do you have someone else transcribe it, or how do you? What do you do with that? I'm just curious. What do you do with that? Yeah. So this is this is kind of how it goes. Is I take photos of the entire book, uh, every single individual page, one by one. And I number them as I upload them onto my laptop. So page one, put it on there, label it, folder, page two. So like for Darling, You're Not Alone, there's a folder on my laptop that says, Darling, You're Not Alone, handwritten draft number one. And then, you know, and I've got my, uh, I've got a camera here so I can use my hands. Yes. When, uh, when, once that process is complete, then I'll have like on one side of my screen, I'll have a Microsoft Word blank kind of open document. And the other side, I'll have page one on the right. And what I'll do is I'll just transfer it manually each individual page. But what I do during that, James, is I use it as a second draft. So I'll change a lot of stuff as I go. And like, you know, once I'm writing the first draft, I'll have ideas about how I want to change stuff in the beginning or the middle. And I'll make notes to myself like, all right, when you transfer it to a Word document, make this happen, you know, here. And um, that's like my kind of excuse to have like draft number two uh, and how I do that. That makes sense. Okay, no, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. So, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, and but it is, it is odd for sure. And I, I've like, I've definitely come around to it. Like for my first book, um, my, my manager, Chris Fronis, who's also my best friend and someone who has you know, been in my corner of my whole career. And, you know, I can't say enough good things about him, but he, uh, he said, all right, this is, you're not doing this again. Like this, this can't be your thing. And then once we got into the second book, he sort of said, you know what? Okay. This is, this, I'll, your process, your process. Yeah, I'll let you deal with it and do it. And if this is how you like to do it, then so be it. So I feel like I've overcome the hump with that. Uh, but it, it took some time. Well, you said, well, you say that it's also therapeutic for you. So it's it really just, it, cause I, I'm sure it makes you super present because you're writing, because you're, you're writing. I mean, you have a blank page and you're literally filling that page. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think. As as any, you know, I mean, you can attest to this too. You've written many projects and books yourself. I think my, that is my favorite part of this whole thing, man. Like to be sitting there with this empty moleskin and pencil and wake up. You know, I like to get up early and write first thing in the morning. And just the places that my mind goes with that freedom. And, you know, I don't have a phone anywhere near me. And I felt like, I feel, I honestly feel like James, those, those are the moments in my life when I like look down and start writing and I look up and it's been three hours and I felt like it's been 10 seconds. And I don't know, man, like that feeling in life, whatever, wherever you get, I mean, to anyone listening, maybe it's not books, maybe it's sports or music or, or, you know, your career that you're in, but wherever you get that, uh, that to happen to you wow, you need to do that. That's the thing you need to pursue and, and give everything you got into. And uh, that's how I feel when I write. And um, yeah. Wow, that's, no, I get that. And so with this, so with the letter writing kind of campaign that you have going on, yeah. the thank you letter stuff, which to me, it's a lost art also. It's a lost art. And I still do get thank you letters from people. Sometimes I get like a, a guest will come on and send it. Like I'll get some of the mail. I'm like, 
Where did I come from? Um, I love it. I think I think there's there is such a there is a personal touch where something whether you have good handwriting or not does not matter. <laughs> we make jokes about people's handwriting for us. Uh, I used to be a nurse, I used to work with doctors who had horrible handwriting. Oh wow. Um, but it's but it's very much this um there is a personal touch that does hit different pieces of you, yeah, your parts of sure. you. It does. Um, for sure. I mean, I I almost to 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 piggyback on that point, I almost feel more touched when I do feel like uh, it's not the best handwriting or maybe even it's not the best grammar or there's a misspelled word. Like it's so personal. It's, 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 it's like a love, lo it's like a love song to the person who's receiving it. And it's, it's only for you, you know, you're the only one who gets to listen to it. And uh, wow, I think it's, it's, it's the coolest thing. So I, I, that's how I feel personally. And it sounds like you do too. Probably not everyone in the world thinks that, but I like to think that, that's why I do it to hopefully give someone that similar, uh, you know, kind of impact. So November is National Gratitude Month, which I didn't know. Uh, yeah. I and I, I give gratitude every day. I love gratitude. I love giving gratitude because um, even when you're feeling bad, it's like a nice challenge. Like, okay, well, there are things. I mean, I may be sad today about this or something go right about that, but I know there are things I can feel grateful for. So that's a great thing. But but one of the things that you're tying us into is the whole thank you. To mm -hmm. others, and my my aunt always says something: you never know when you'll make someone smile because always the everybody says the opposite. You never know when you make somebody upset or make somebody mad. It's like, well, you know who makes somebody smile, and I think right. Like I send, like I'll send cards. Like I, I have, I just I have a I have a card I'm working on right now. So it's funny you say that. I have a card <laughs> working on right now. Um, she likes she likes she likes leopards. The leopard print card I found. Oh, that's sweet, that's uh, sweet. By an artist. And I'm, I'm literally, and I literally, I'm about to write inside a little thing. I mean, like I, it's, this is before I knew about this interview, I, I was going to do this. So it's funny. I do that too. I actually hand write my cards um, and send to people my signatures. I mean, it's, I think there's something, this hits differently in your emotions when you get something and go, oh, and I just, I mean, I guess I grew up that way. I'm Gen X. I grew up writing right. letters to my grandparents, writing letters, like I said, pen pals, who always wrote, thank you. And even my kids, they're teaching their kids to send me. Well, now it's kind of more like text now. But in the right. beginning, it was like paintings and handwritten notes and handwritten cards. I miss that now. I'm like, dang it. I miss I miss getting those. I do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I miss it too. And I think um, that's kind of what, what spurred on this campaign and this movement, this You're Not Alone letter writing campaign through my book, is just the idea of like, hey, we should try to get back to that. Um, because I do think even in just the last couple of years through COVID, we've gotten so accustomed to living behind screens that um, this is something I think we need more than ever. Um, and I think, again, like it's really not too hard. I mean, I, you know, people like you and I who you know write a lot. Yeah, maybe it's easier for us to sit down and write a page long letter. But I don't even think I'm really asking people to do that. I think I'm just telling people like you could send a three, four sentence note to someone and just tell them you're not alone. And I think if everybody right now sat down and did that, we'd be in a much better place as a as a just humankind. And uh, people don't feel like they have that sort of support. People feel isolated. So I think this message is like super important today than it's and then more than it ever has been. So I'm very passionate about it and and trying to spread that message. You okay? So. To go to the next step of this, because I know folks are like, I don't have to say. I don't want writing cards. I don't have to say. You actually have like a five point plan. Yeah. How to actually write thank you letters. And I want to just kind of the five points are handwrite it, say thanks, you're not alone. Kind of like this. Seal it with a kiss, which is K I S S. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, post it. Use a nice stamp. Uh, and then mail it. Of course, is number official number six. Right. Uh, but okay. I. I think it's such an interesting thing that you actually tell people kind of how to kind of do because a lot of folks I like say I'm not a writer. Those first things say I'm not a writer. I don't know how to write. I'm not. I don't know how to write anything. It's not enough of an excuse, I think. Right? Like you don't have to be a writer to to just tell someone that you're thinking about them. Uh, and the power of that is 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 amazing. And um, yeah, it's it's simple. It's it's not too difficult. It doesn't take too much time. But the amount of impact it can have is tremendous because. As, you know, look, I, I think so often in life, and I write about this in the book too, is like we tend to focus on 
the one bad thing that can happen in life and how that spurs on just kind of a ripple effect of bad things all around us. And that's very true. And like, you know, if you make one bad decision and you, you know, are drinking too much and you get in a car and drive and you hit somebody, God forbid, like you change that person's life forever, your own, your family's, the, the ripple effects, you know, just of that, just to give you an example, are endless. I think we all know about that. Yes. My argument is on the other side of that is actually the same thing. That one small good thing that you do as a person, as, as, as just a, you know, a human on this planet, and this is anyone, can have an endless amount of ripple effects. And the idea here is if you write one letter to someone, then they'll write one letter to someone. And that just snowballs and snowballs. And suddenly we're all getting to this place where everyone's just a little bit happier and maybe a little bit less upset with their day. And maybe when they walk into that coffee shop, shout out to coffee, um, they're a little bit there. They smile a little bit more at the person who's checking them out and, uh, you know, just say, Hey, have a great day. Thank you for helping me. And it's like these, these little, I, I guess just sort of kind of small insignificant moments we have in life to me are not insignificant. And I think I'm trying to tell people like, take those seriously too. What it is, is I say this all the time. I'm a certified life coach. So I always want this in my coaching. Um, what I do, you don't even know it does affect you. What you do affects me. There is a ripple effect in the world. And we don't know how it affects you. But I know how is it, it may not feel evident and present as affecting you, but it really does. And it was funny. We did this campaign because I just left Twitter because I think Twitter is horrible. Uh, but I'm on there. But I'm on there. Um, but I just, I hate it. But anyway, so, but there was an actress, because I'm in the business, I'm in a public eye, it's crazy. So one of my actress friends was getting attacked, just for playing a character, but like, whatever. So I started a campaign, I said, what if we tweet at her just positive stuff? Yeah, yeah. And literally all of my people, my followers, we did that in one afternoon. Wow. And it made her cry, of course, and, and happy tears. But it was like, I saw, but besides that, I saw this ripple effect happening yeah. that we're all swimming upstream to happy, to happier stuff. And it was like the vibration felt bigger. It felt, it just felt brighter. It felt nicer. And I believe in the whole, we all do you, what you're doing is affecting me. And I didn't even know you. And like what I do, I, I feel like we're all, it is, it's all, we're, we're all connected. Well, and I, I have to admit a lot of this, you know, isn't just organically for me, to be honest, like it came up, a lot from a friendship I had with a little boy named Luke Baden who passed away from sickle cell disease. And I watched this kid who, you know, for those of you that know, or maybe listening, this is the story I wrote about for my first book, Moonflower, but he was a real person. And he was my biggest fan when I was an athlete. And this little boy tragically passed away at the age of 10 years old. And the community I live in, Oak Park, um, California, rallied around this in such a strong way that um, all of these years later and still to this day, there is like an endless wave of love that has, you know, I go back to, his, to the high school that he and I met at every single year and speak. I go to his elementary school and meet with his, his teacher still. And we, we all wear these Luke Strong shirts with his you know, name on them. And it's, it's the, the impact that one person had on this entire community even though he passed away six years ago, is still being felt. And um, yeah, I think that similarly I'm trying to capture in this book with the letters. Yes, and we'll shout to his memory and to his family, of course. It's always, it's always great um, because it's, well, again, he affected you. That's kind of, that's the thing. It's yeah. like it's like his his life affected your life. I, just, I, just, I wish people, if I can't ever, you know, say that, I'm like, Folks, we are connected. Mm -hmm. That's what's so, that's what's so, and a lot of times I'll meet people and go, so you know this, right? It's like right now, you said Oak Park, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know Derek Ross? You know, I feel like I've heard that name, but he it does is, He yeah, does a lot of things on the board of stuff for Oak Park Unified cool. School District. He's cool. a really good friend of mine. I love that. I love that. I was that. like, yeah, I don't, I, I never hear Oak Park in anybody. And when you said that, when you said that, I mean, I know Thousand knows that. When you said yeah. Oak Park, like, wait a minute. 
my friend of like 25 years, oh, that's that's cool. a major, is a yeah, yeah. there. He's in Oak, he's in Oak Park. So yeah, so I went to Oak Park High School. I graduated there in 2013. And yeah, I speak there every year now. Um, it's like an annual occurrence where I come back on the anniversary of Luke's passing. Yeah. Uh, so Luke passed away on September 14, 2016. And every September 14th since then, pretty much, I've gone back and done a talk about, you know, to, to the to classrooms, to even the whole gym and the whole school um, about Luke and his message and his gratitude. So, so darling, you're not alone. Dot com. You can visit for more details of the letter writing stuff. It's awesome. Yes, yeah, yeah, specifically. Yeah, you take that out. Um, okay. I will now we, we get more into the book a little bit. But one thing I want to ask you is because you are a former basketball player, because you are ten feet tall, <laughs> as you we were saying before everything else. I'm just six feet. You guys are all way taller than I am. I have a brother who's six three. He lives with me. I'm like, yeah, you're really, really tall. Um, what is one thing that you have learned from your basketball playing days that you've able been able to apply to your writing process? So huge, man. And so, I, I, I mean, I'm so glad you asked me that because I think if if I say anything today that people remember, I hope it's this: is that um, I was sort of under recruited, uh, slept on, uh, not taken seriously as an as an athlete. And I kind of just built this like, you know, blinders uh, focus into my career as a player where I didn't care. And I was just going to figure it out and kind of bulldoze my way into more playing time and get into the, my dream school to play in college. And uh, that's how I always was as an athlete, as a basketball player. And I think that's the only reason I've been successful as a writer. Um, I think writing is a very difficult thing, but the most difficult person you have to overcome is yourself. And if you let that self doubt creep into your head while you're writing, you'll actually never complete anything. And you have to overcome like the imperfections of writing a first draft. I mean, you have to just say, you know what, I know what I wrote today wasn't very good, but tomorrow it's going to be better. And maybe tomorrow isn't better, but then the day after that will be better. And I just didn't care while I was writing my first book, what, you know, how many people were going to tell me this is a bad idea? How many people are going to tell me, you know, after you write it, I don't know who's going to read it. And I just kept my head down and focused and it's gotten me to this stage now. And now suddenly I've got people that are, you know, really quick to say, Oh, I've always believed in you and this is great. And, you know, I love those people and not to talk to them, but it's, uh, I don't, I don't forget how in the beginning, um, how I had to just become that just headstrong, you know, just put my head down and focus. And that's something I really learned from sports is just like, you got to be your own biggest fan because, um, you know, you want to go back to talking about the redhead thing, man. I, I, I went into Texas A&M and, uh, college station for one of my games and they were, you know, throwing out some crazy redhead jokes. And that's when you really just got to be mentally so strong yes. up there. And uh, so once I got into, you know, being a professional writer, I was prepared. I was prepared for, to get criticism and bad reviews or anything like that. Because uh, I, you know, I was, I was dealing with that as an athlete my whole life. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, when, when you're a basketball player, when you do any sports. Yeah, any sports. Some, I think, yeah, any sports. It's, it's very, you're, you're being, well, you're being judged on your plays. You're being judged on your athleticism. Well, in like an open format, too. I mean, it's not like you get a bad review you're reading it, you know, personally, you're on a basketball floor, you can see the person who's saying, you know, that about you, and you got to keep playing, you got to keep your head in the game and focus. And uh, you kind of get good at that after doing it for a long time. And uh, I think that never leaves you. But I think it's helped me a lot as a writer. Yeah, that's, 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 that's good. I, I tell people sports are great. I played football in high school. Sports are, sports are great that it's... What school did you go to? I went to Inglewood High, so I was here in Inglewood. Uh, cool. That's okay. cool. Great. But I was, what's funny, when I was a kid, I was bust out to Sherman Oaks Elementary School. Oh, wow. Okay. I did go to the Valley for a while. Then we came back. A little closer to where I'm at, yeah. yeah. Well, it was the 70s one time. <laughs> it was when stone tablets were. I don't know, <laughs> um, but no, but I, I think sports, I played soccer as a kid, tennis, swam. I think, I think competitive sports are a great thing to join, uh, learn teamwork. And there's a lot of things you learn about yourself. Yeah, uh, that do apply later. That applies later in life. There's a lot of things like same with art and creative. It all it all does help build who you are. And 
sports are, I think, are a great thing. I mean, I think some people are poo-poo sports. I'm like, no, I think sports, if you find the right sport for your child or a person finds the right sport for them, it's a great thing. Well, I think, too, and I think this is just a different point altogether, but I think it's so huge. It's like it, it's a melting pot. It brings people from every background, ethnicity, and region together. Like my teammates in college and high school, or not so much high school because that's a local school, but definitely in college, I had teammates from all over the country, even the world. I mean, I got a guy in my locker who's from, you know, to my right, who's from Canada, and to my left, who's from Seattle. And it's like, you're all forced to be in the same room and solve these problems. And uh, you really just, you you really do a, it's, it's a great place to figure out how, wow, we're actually not all very different. And it doesn't really matter where you come from. And uh, yeah, what a great lesson to learn. Yeah, no, definitely. Lesson. Okay, the book. So what is the book about? <laughs> After all, yeah, all right. the brother stuff. But I guess might as, might as well you know, talk about the book a little bit, of course. So right. what, is the, what is the book about? So Darling, You're Not Alone is a story about a kid named Phoenix Ivor who is 15 years old. And uh, it's in the year 1999. And he's living in a fictional town of Darling, Colorado. And Phoenix is sort of this like, you know, really, really gifted kid, but honestly is sort of um, tortured by his own mental uh, social anxieties and depression um, that he deals with. Uh, and he really isn't able to make many friends. And the book sort of begins when he's entering high school as a freshman at Darling High School. And what's a really important part of the story is his father, Herman, is sort of his best friend and the person that can kind of like get through to him the most. But what's important to know about him is he also used to be a police officer and something happened. And for some reason, he's not anymore. And now he's the security guard at Darling High School. So Phoenix and his dad, Herman, get to walk to school together every day and spend a lot of time together. And that's who Phoenix sort of, like I said, relies on for this as this social outlet. Um, when on just a regular day, um, Phoenix walks into the library and two students that walk in right behind him instead of holding books are holding handguns. And the, the quiet town of Darling, Colorado becomes the epicenter of the worst school shooting in U.S. history. And this all you know, takes place very early on in the story because then it kind of, you know, and I will save what happens next to, to people that want to read it. But it's really a story about how Phoenix has to not only overcome his initial social anxieties, but also now overcome this tragedy that is in like an unthinkable disaster um, in a way that restores his hope in humanity and actually shows him that the world is a good place. Um, so Darling, You're Not Alone takes on this kind of, you know, really, I think, important topic of gun violence in schools and, um, you know, carries that through as like a part of the book. But there's a lot more to it beyond that. So that's a little bit about what it's about. Was there any trepidation in that? Because we, we, it seems like almost every week we have one, it seems like these days. Um, yeah, I mean, I, mean I, sorry, I just I just want to take a second too before you ask that to say, uh, if I may, that, um, you know, there was a there's actually a shooting this morning at, in St. Louis, Missouri at a high school uh, where three students, I, I, I think it, they're not saying if they're students or not, maybe teachers and students but three yeah. people were killed and um i just want to say you know my heart breaks for yeah. all of them I'm thinking about the people in st louis yeah um and uh yeah i'm definitely you know heavy heavy hearts today of course um but yeah, 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 yeah. i want to take a second to mention yes please which well, all them and their families and everybody affected by school shootings because again like i just said there's just like always oh, one almost every week somewhere yeah. um, happening and um and in la we have a lot of smash and grabs happening nowadays yeah. That's oh, yeah. happening to you, and guns sometimes are involved. So I mean, so there was was there any kind of like, should I add this in the book? Should I not? I mean, was that or, or because it's such so central to the story, it has to be in the book. Well, I think to answer that question, James, I think as you know, to write any book takes so long, and it takes there's so much energy and so much time put into these things that I just feel like for me, I don't think I'll ever write anything. And like, if my name is on it, it means it's something I think is really important to talk about. And this topic to me is just, you know, I think there's people that are much more well-equipped to speak about like 
how we can solve it or what the statistics are. But man, like what I can tell you is every time I see these things come up on the news, I am just, I, I'm like devastated and, and stuck in place for about 10 minutes before I can even move on. And like, I really wanted to write a story about someone who goes through this because I think too, like, unfortunately, look, a lot of the attention goes towards, you know, uh, the people that are, that do lose their lives. And look, that's obviously super horrible and I'm not taking away from that. But I think what we don't talk about enough is all of the other kids that maybe aren't directly impacted, but then have to go to school the next year and have to think about that memory of what happened when someone, you know, walked into their campus like that. And um, I think that there's, this is a much bigger issue than just like this many people were directly impacted. It's like, how about this? How about this communities around these people? Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to write a book that kind of talked a little bit about that. That's very cool. That's cool. I mean, it's, it's a, a timely story, obviously. And, um, and making this character, the lead catcher Phoenix, younger was that very important also was that a very important thing to do i love phoenix man i'm sure you any story you write you have a real passion yeah. for your characters i feel like i know this kid like he's like my best friend yeah. um so i miss spending time with him and writing about him but uh yeah i wanted i wanted phoenix to be someone younger because i think that age of like 15 16 that he's in, in the book is you're you're so impressionable and i i do think you know, I, I certainly felt like I was like this. You, you kind of also can get a little bit too, uh, you're, you're going through a real shift and like you can kind of get gloomy and like not feel like the world is that great. As you're kind of getting older, you're not really a kid anymore. You're like this teenager and people are treating you differently now and uh, it's hard. And um, I wanted to have a character that has these sort of normal fears of the world um, to then go through a tragedy, but ultimately something that I think is really really beautiful too and and what happens to him next and um gosh yeah i just i miss him and i feel jealous for anybody that gets to meet him in this book for the first time and read about him because i i think he's a really special person well is, i mean is there um is there a chance that um i know you, I know you just finished this book <laughs> and i always ask was there a sequel or another story with them or or, or, is it, or is it time to put him to bed and now you go on to other characters, you go on to other, you create other characters? I mean, yeah, I think, I think my answer to that is at this stage, you never know. Like, I, I, there's always, I mean, life is, is crazy and you never know what kind of, you know, opportunities or ideas you may have to maybe continue a story on elsewhere. But I would say at this current stage, once I complete a book and, and put it to bed, um, it's done. The characters in that story, you know, I've poured everything I possibly can into it at that point, And I don't want to revisit and tell it further. I feel like it is complete. Um, but we'll see, I guess. I guess that remains to be seen. Yeah. I don't know. I say that with tongue in cheek. I mean, nobody has like, when I was in doing all my other interviews, well, was there about part two or because we do, there are certain characters that I write that I'm like, I want to live with them for a while. Yeah. Like, seriously, you want, like, you like, you really want, you really want to continue. You you create these worlds um, that you want to sometimes stay in or think. I I had, actually I had a couple of situations where I had a, a smaller character. I I liked them uh, so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a spinoff. I did a couple of those. Yeah. I'm like, I like. I still there's still part of that world, main one, but they're their own little world, and I can flesh that out too. And that was fun. I took one, I, I fleshed it out, and it was fun. And um, but you're right. As writers, we're living them, we're breathing them, we're you know, we're coughing with them, we're laughing with them, we're crying with them, right? Yeah. Right. Oh my god, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think to be honest, I mean, so I wrote this. This book took me three years to write, and I think I can say this like now that the book is done. I think a part of me was hanging up just because I wasn't, I didn't want to move on from it. like, I think this book was probably done about a year ago, but I was just so wanting to tweak little things here and there that probably didn't need too much more work, but I almost would like enjoy that time. And yeah, I miss it. I miss being in that world. And, um, but it is time for this story to get into other people's hands and to share it with the world. So. What age group do you think is earliest we can read this? I'd say earliest is, um, 
you know, about 16, 15, 16. Um, but I think, I do think that the book is for anyone even older than that. Like, you know, even people. Also, I mean, I was, I was, I was kind of, I was trying to, I was trying to figure it like it's young. Like, who's, what's yeah. the earliest age? So 15, okay, yeah. That's, I'm yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. that's the bottom, right? Yeah. I was trying to figure out what age, I meant to, I meant to say, like, what age do you think you could start, people could start reading this book? Because yeah. I know some themes can be too much for people of a certain age. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, it is, it's a heavy book. I mean, it's not, it's not exactly something that is, uh, should be met with a uh, little, um, you know, kind of like, you, you got to be prepared to go through some tough things and tough topics. But I do think as a storyteller, my goal is that um, this, is real, this is real. This is, this is, this is based on things that, are actually happening in the everyday world around us. And uh, I love when fiction does that because I think, you know, like one of my favorite authors is John Green. And some of the things and themes that he addresses in like, like looking for Alaska, for example, where, um, you know, and now I don't want to ruin the book for anyone that hasn't read it because it's an amazing yeah. book, but there, there is uh, sort of these characters that are living in this, this utopian society of this, this uh, boarding school and then boom, some like real life, like, you know, reality strikes. And I just remember being shocked by that. And also just so impressed by his ability to, to write a story that made me feel like that could happen in my life too. And I try to do the same thing with the books I write. Yeah. No, it's, no, I just, it's, uh, I'm telling you, there's nothing like someone picking up your book and or or a Kindle, whatever, or whatever, whatever they get it, and they read it and they give you feedback. There's nothing like that. There's, there's something. It's just like there's the and then hopefully I'll put out to you. I will manifest it for you. Put out to the universe. <laughs> I can see this being a movie or something on maybe Netflix or something out there or mm -hmm. something or something or a series or something. You never yeah. know. I'll say it yeah. for you. Yeah, please, please um, say it. Say it a lot. <laughs> say it loud because. Also, I have people, I have people like I do audio dramas. I have people who actually read my words, and there's nothing like it. Yeah, wow. nothing like somebody reading your words because these are a whole other dimension. But that's just for the future. I'm putting, I'm manifesting it for you. Put yeah. it out there. Put it out there. Put it out there. Yeah, please. Um, well, my first book was uh, we had a shopping agreement for with a group of film producers to turn it into a feature film, um, and that is still something we are pursuing in different ways and. I was in, a, you know, incredible experience, and it's still ongoing. And yeah, I have similar aspirations for this novel, so I want to see this character's, uh, you know, make it onto the screen. I think that would be awesome. So thank you for putting it out there. Of course, of course, for you. Who is who is JD overall? Who are you? Because I mean, like, I mean, I could, I just, I just googled you, and like ten thousand things come up. Uh, and here, love it, love it, basketball, and sports related, but your books come up too, and then it comes up. But I was just like, I said, I'm going to sit here. I like just because you can Google me and there's a million things come up also. But I was like, I said, okay, so I'm Googling it. But I have you, I have you here on the horn. I'm like, who, who, who is you? Um, JD is, uh, I think the, the easiest way I can answer this is JD is someone who's obsessed with the little things. Um, I'm really fascinated by these sort of small occurrences, as I've said already, but in particular, this is like just a, this is something that I think bridges from my writing to my athletic career, to my friendships with my, you know, my family and my friends and beyond um, is I think just like, like before coming on to your show, listening to you talk about coffee and your obsession with it. And that just, that little small thing to me, James is like, that that's everything. Like I, I just immediately could place myself in a space where I was so excited to speak with you today about all the things we did just on that little note. And uh, I love getting to know the little things about people. And I think that's why I love to write is I like my characters to have these little kind of characteristics about them where they, you know, it, because I think that's, that's, that thread is what connects us all is I think we all have something in common with everyone. We just got to try to find it. So uh, JD is someone who likes the little things in life and uh, will never, will never, you know, kind of move away from that. All right. So jdwritesbooks.com, darling, you're not alone.com, jd underscore S L A J C H E R T is where he is on social media. 
Uh, I don't think I'm following. I'm going to follow you. I think I'm following. I don't know if I'm following you. Yeah, yeah. I, I got. You. I followed you right before the show, so I, okay. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're going to try to follow you, and hopefully we can meet in person someday. We're both in Los Angeles. Hey, I would love that. I would love to make that happen. If if I'm uh, ever down your way, let's make it happen. And if you are out my way, please let's do it. We're not too far, so I would love love to. I'll, I'll buy you that cup of iced coffee if you want. <laughs> I love you, and I'll get I'll get you uh, some apples. Okay, cool. <laughs> Joke from something else, folks. Don't uh, tell the oranges. The book is right there. Johnny, you're not alone. It's out November 3rd. So uh, if you're watching this, this, this interview is coming out this week. So it, so it's coming up another week or so. Like literally, yeah. like, I think it's Halloween's next. Yeah, this is coming up next week. Yeah, next week. home stretch. Home stretch. Home yeah, stretch. I'm excited. So congratulations on completing the book and getting it out there and getting the concept. I know how hard it could be. But also, I know how rewarding it can be. So, thanks for putting something out there in the world that's out to you, entertain and help others. Yeah, thank you, man. And again, I, I just appreciate you having me on the show. You've got great guests, great energy. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. It went by too quick. I'm. Uh, I hope I can come back soon and, oh, and yes. chat, chat a bit more with you. Yes. But uh, yeah, I mean, if anybody out there listening to this um, is having a tough time or is maybe going through a situation. Uh, I hope this was able to give give you a little bit of light, um, but just keep going, you know, keep battling, uh, find a way, and uh, you know, none of us are alone in this world, and we got to we got to believe in that. So, I agree. And so, his book will be available on, I believe, Amazon, probably Barnes and Noble. His book will be available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. Um, and you can also get on my website, jdwritesbooks.com. And then, like you said, more of the, about the letter writing campaign is also available on darlingyourenotalone.com, where you can upload your own letter, and I can interact, and we can communicate on there. And, uh, yeah, I hope you, I hope you write, uh, write that letter. Yes, and this will all be underneath the description, so you can actually just go right there and see it, of course. Make cool. it easy for you at home. Uh, once again, I'm James Live Jr. I'm where, I'm where all James Live Juniors are sold at James Live Jr. on all social media platforms. They say I'm sold out because I'm busy, but who knows? I can, you can still buy me. Um, and my books are on Amazon also, so you can check out James Live Jr. I have check out. Check, them out. check me out. Check me out. Why not? Check us both out. Support the writers. Support yeah. the art of writing. Support the art of reading. It's very, very, very important. Uh, I mean, very rewarding. I do. I just, I just love writers. It was your pages with James Lott Jr. is on Facebook. So go ahead and go ahead and check us out on Facebook. I'm posting all kinds of books, what I'm reading these days, what I'm coming. Right now, I'm actually reading a Spice Girl autobiography. <laughs> LC. Love it. 40 Spice. Actually, really good book. I'm reading that. Now, my next book in line is a Martin Short autobiography. Um, and it's really, so far, pieces I've looked at, it's really good. So I'm always reading all kinds of things. So, Make sure you get get his book, get out there and read it. Um, we'll see you next time with more writers talking about writing here on Number Two Pages with James Lott Jr.